Well, just as a follow-up to that, one thing that people do not know about Kennedy is that he was an anti-Malthusian, explicitly. Um, in a speech that Kennedy delivered to the um, American Academy of Sciences, he attacked Malthus by name, directly contradicting what every other British-sponsored so-called scientific institution was pushing at that time, which was population reduction, uh, population control, carrying capacity, and all of these Malthusian ideologies. What Kennedy said, this is just an excerpt from the speech, he said this, Malthus argued a century and a half ago that man, by using up all of his available resources, would forever press on the limits of subsistence, thus condemning mankind to an indefinite future of misery and poverty. We can now begin to hope, and I believe know, that Malthus was expressing not a law of nature, but merely the limitation then of scientific and social wisdom. The truth or falsity of his prediction will depend now with the tools we have on our own actions now and in the years to come. And then he spent the rest of his speech promoting the breakthrough high technology scientific discoveries that he challenged the scientists of his time to make. Now, this is Kennedy's opposition and hatred of Malthusian ideology is perfectly consistent with his personal family history. Um, Kennedy's great-grandfather had been forced to emigrate to America to come via ship to Boston to escape the great Irish famine of 1848 which had been created as a genocide policy by the policies of the British. And it was explicitly at that time a direct application of the ideology of Malthusianism. There were members of the House of Lords in the British Parliament at that time who were arguing, no, we cannot give relief to the starving Irish people because it will break the, uh, it will break the, the uh, principle of the great Parson Malthus, that we actually need population reduction in order to reduce misery and reduce the poverty of those lower classes. Um, as a result of this, genocide was, uh, occurred as a direct result of the policies of the British Empire, right there in Western Europe, on the island of Ireland, where half of the population, if not more, either died of starvation or were forced to leave the country. This is the family history of President Kennedy. Um, his relatives also had been leaders in the 1798 uprising against the British, against British rule in Ireland. Uh, which was led by many veterans of the American Revolution. Um, County Wexford, which was his ancestral home, was the epicenter of this insurrection. And then going all the way even into the 20th century, relatives of Kennedy back in Ireland were fighting in the Irish Revolution for uh, to kick the British out of Ireland. So this is something that was in his bones and the direct connection to... Uh, the oligarchical mouthpiece of Parson Malthus. Um, and I think I wanted to bring this up at this point because it's consistent with our theme from last week, that Kennedy's role as the representative of the historic mission of the United States in its role in the struggle against the oligarchical principle, uh, which is a policy of intentional depopulation through four tools famine, war, poverty, and disease. This has been consistently the method by which the oligarchical principle 
has reduced the human population. And these are four evils which Kennedy directly fought against. Peace, the refusal to be sucked into war, the refusal to be sucked into a pointless war in Indochina, and the refusal to allow the Cuban Missile Crisis to erupt into a thermonuclear war. Uh, the evil of poverty, the evil of disease, and the evil of famine, all of which are conquered by uh, the increase in the energy flux density and the productivity of the human race. Now, I know Dennis has more to present on this later, but I thought this was an appropriate time to connect the legacy of Kennedy to what you uh, elaborated last week as the identity of the United States as the leader of the struggle against the oligarchical principle worldwide. Well, you go back a little bit earlier, and you take the on the Irish question. The slaughter of the Irish was done by the Dutch, and the same Dutch became the monarchy, the British monarchy. And because of that war, the first war against Ireland, the invasion of Britain, we concentrated on the extermination of the Irish. And of course, this had a great significance for the American Revolution. We note the number of people from Ireland who had been involved in leading positions within the struggle for our freedom and our nation, the same thing. It's always the same. And that's, that is what the meaning of this thing is. It's always the same. It is anti-human. Why, what did Rome do? Rome engaged in vast genocide against its own population. The Romans did. Other cultures of that type have done the same thing. What happened in Troy, for example, was genocide, intentional. And so therefore you have a class of human beings who biologically are human, but in behavior they're not. They consider themselves the overlords of the mass of people. And the great thing that worries them the most is that there will be an excess of the people who they kept poor. And that is what's happening today. First drive them and make them poor, and then kill them for being poor. 